Welcome back to the channel. It's been a couple of weeks. Last week was so crazy. I had three gigs and a couple of rehearsals and there just wasn't any time to plan or film a video. So I'm sorry if you were looking for one and you did not see it, but I'm back better than ever. So a few weeks ago, I posted a video called five things I love about living in the Czech Republic. And most people were very appreciative of that video and all the positive things I said, but some people were a little suspicious. They were like, hey man, this is way too positive. Like, I live here and it's not as good as you say it is. And uh, some people, like a couple people accused me of working for like the tourism board or something. One guy asked me what my agenda was, uh, which I thought was, was kind of funny. So to be clear, I have no agenda at all. It's just that I wanted to start with the positive things about living here because it's always good to lead with positive things so that people know that you're not just whining and that your intentions are basically good. However, not everything about living in the Czech Republic or about living in Prague specifically is perfect. And so I was actually planning to follow that video with another video called like five things I hate about living in the Czech Republic. But I realized that hate is a really strong word and I actually can't honestly say that I hate anything about living here, but there are definitely a few things that annoy me. So today's video, we're going to talk about all the little things that annoy me about living specifically in Prague because I can't really speak for the rest of the country. I haven't lived anywhere else in the Czech Republic for a long enough period of time to speak with any authority or conviction about the rest of the country. So today's video is going to be specifically about five things that I find mildly annoying about living in Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic. So it's only fitting that we should start our tour of the annoying side of Prague in what has unfortunately become one of the most annoying places in the city, which is behind me, Václavské náměstí, or Wenceslas Square. And I say unfortunately because this is such a beautiful historic location where so many amazing things in Czech history have happened. And if you look across the street, right here in between the National Museum and this beautiful statue in the square, we have a McDonald's. So this brings me to the first thing I find super annoying about Prague. And this is a big category because it's just everything connected with the tourism industry in Prague. So like everywhere else in the world, tourism in Prague has been dramatically impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. And it's not hard to see what a positive impact that has had on many areas of the city that were previously just completely overrun with tourists and affected by a lot of really serious social and economic problems as a result of that. And we're going to see some of the remnants of a lot of these problems here in just a moment as we walk down Wenceslas Square into Old Town Square. So there's been a lot of debate about uh, if and how and to what extent the tourism industry in Prague should be allowed to return to its previous state. Because obviously there have been a lot of benefits to the pause in tourism that has happened over the past year or year and a half in this city. And I like to think I have an interesting perspective on this issue because I was a tourist when I first arrived in Prague and over the past year and a half, almost two years now, I've slowly evolved into something more than a tourist, something more like a citizen of Prague. So I kind of have both perspectives. I understand what it's like to be a tourist who has just arrived in this new city and the sorts of things that appeal to you as a person in that situation. And I also understand now how annoying and irritating some of these things can be for regular residents of the city who are just trying to go about their lives. So the first thing, I already mentioned the McDonald's and here we have a Starbucks and behind me, across the road there you can see a KFC. And that's not even the full extent of it, honestly. There's another McDonald's uh, just a few hundred meters down this way and I'm sure there's another KFC somewhere very close as well. And then there are two Starbucks located in Old Town Square, literally about 100 meters from each other. So I know that this is not a problem that's specifically exclusively caused by tourism. I mean, it's a broader economic problem uh, that's happening all around the entire world. But actually, this is the only thing on this list that I think would, uh, would qualify for the word hate. And it's not even a Czech problem. But it is a problem that affects the capital city of Prague quite, uh, quite strongly. And the problem is that these giant international corporations, they have so much money and they're able to just come in and basically set up wherever they want. They can, they can choose their real estate in any city. They can put a McDonald's right next to, you know, the most beautiful building in the city. They can open a Starbucks anywhere they want, even if that Starbucks makes zero money, even if people hate it. 
if the locals hate it, if, tour if tourists don't even go there, if it's terribly managed and run, and it doesn't make a profit, it doesn't matter because they have so much money. It's more just about their international brand awareness and brand presence. It just annoys the hell out of me because basically what's happening is that they are pushing out the local culture, they're pushing out local businesses, and they're importing all of the problems that go along with this giant corporate food system. So people pointed out on my health video that obesity was a problem in the Czech Republic even before this trend started happening. So I understand that the obesity problem in the Czech Republic is not exclusively related to this, but it certainly can't be helping. And even just from a pure social and economic standpoint, it's, uh, it's definitely not a favorable trend. So these giant international corporations, they're so rich, so powerful that they can just come to any country in the world, set up shop wherever they want, uh, take up the prime real estate, jack up the rent prices, and they don't even have to make a profit. They, they don't even have to make like a, a good product. And what it does is, is it essentially turns these beautiful central tourist areas of all these cities into shopping malls, you know, into like an American strip mall. So like I said, having been a tourist myself, I can understand why these businesses are kind of comforting. I mean, you, you land in a new spot and you don't know the language, you don't know the culture, you're completely out of your element, and then you see a Starbucks or a McDonald's, and it's very familiar. You know exactly what that is and how it works. You can go there and you can feel at home, get your coffee or your food or whatever you might need, and then you can venture out into the city. So I get it. I understand why tourists go to those places. I understand why they target tourist areas. But the longer I live here, the more I wish you could go to Old Town Square or Wenceslas Square and find some really unique, interesting local businesses in that prime real estate where they should be. You know, there should, when, you think, when you really think about it, there absolutely should not be a Starbucks right next to Old Town Square in the heart of Prague. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a Czech business. There's nothing Czech about it. The longer I live here, the more I think about the situation uh, and the more I become aware of the kind of messed up economics of the whole situation, the more it annoys me to see McDonald's, KFC, Starbucks, and all of these other international corporations just setting up camp here and turning Prague into a tourist shopping mall. In my opinion, if the world continues the way it's going, eventually every single place in the entire world is gonna look the same. It's gonna feel the same, it's gonna have the same five or 10 businesses available to choose from, and all of the unique local culture is just gonna be pushed out by corporations. It seems like the goal of these corporate CEOs is to turn the entire world into the equivalent of an American strip mall. And American strip malls are some of the saddest places on earth, so. This Hot Peppers VIP lounge right here, this is another symptom of the uh, tourist disease in the center of Prague. I can't tell you how many times I've walked past this place late at night and there's been some poor, probably underpaid girl dancing there on the podium right inside the, uh, the entrance, just looking absolutely miserable. Wow, I'm, actually, I'm surprised to actually see uh, a couple of women going in there. That's amazing. Oh no, they're just going to take a picture. They're not actually going inside the club. <laughs> okay. So there's a number of those clubs all up and down Wenceslas Square. And if you walk down this strip late at night, you'll just be assaulted by numerous like sleazy men who are trying to lure you into one of them. And I gotta hand it to them. They really do go the extra mile to try to get you in there. Like one time when I was walking along, <laughs> Uh, they promised me that there would be a demonstration downstairs of a, a sex act that I cannot name on YouTube because I'll get immediately probably demonetized. But uh, I'll just say it involves not this, but this. <laughs> I did not take them up on their offer, but that's the kind of thing that you can expect when you're walking along Wenceslas Square at about 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Despite all of the annoying and trashy things about Wenceslas Square, it's still pretty beautiful when the sun is setting on a night like this and you see all of these beautifully preserved old buildings which thankfully are still there even if they do have uh, some really terrible tourist businesses in the bottom of them. You can still get a sense for what the city probably looked like 100 or 200 years ago which is really cool. So next on the list of irritating things about the tourist area of Prague we have these souvenir shops which you find about every 20 or 30 meters or so and they're just full of useless junk that has absolutely nothing to do with real Czech culture and everything to do with tourists' terrible stereotypes about Czech culture. So for example, we have this sweatshirt that says Praha Drinking Team, which is just not funny, not cool, and 
just really lame. We have Proc, check me out. Wow, so hilarious. You have all these little kitschy, uh, you know, statues and snow globes and engraved plates, things like that. Just, just generally things that people think would be cool to uh, take home with them from Prague as a souvenir when they've only been here for like a day or two. And I'm just going to tell you, for any tourists watching this, like, it's not cool. These souvenirs, they're probably going to break in your suitcase. Uh, or if they don't break in your suitcase, they're just going to be added onto the pile of junk that you already have at home. And they have nothing to do with any kind of genuine Czech culture or anything that's genuinely Czech at all. All these little tourist trinkets that you see here in Prague, uh, they have the same thing in every European capital. So if you are a tourist, uh, especially an American tourist, because we seem to be particularly fond of our trinkets, uh, let's just stop supporting these lame, overpriced souvenir shops in Prague. And hopefully they'll go out of business eventually and they'll be replaced with something more authentic and more interesting. So this restaurant behind me, I don't know, I have to be fair, because I don't know if it's the same ownership, the same exact business as when I was here a year and a half ago. But one of my first nights in Prague, I was extremely hungry at like 11.30 p.m. And I didn't know where to go, I didn't know what was available. And I walked past this restaurant and I went inside and they served me a terrible tiny little plate of Svichkova for over 500 crowns, which I learned later on is like two and a half times what even a really excellent plate of Svichkova should cost in Prague. For example, I ate Svichkova at the Café Imperial uh, a couple weeks ago and it was the best, one of the best meals I've ever had, actually. Certainly the best Svichkova I've ever had. And it was, I think, 200 crowns, if I remember correctly somewhere between two and three hundred for sure. And that's just a really great example of how the businesses in the center of Prague are pretty much in the business of ripping off tourists who don't know any better. And they come here with their tourist money, they're ready to spend money because they're on holiday. And these businesses just shamelessly overcharge them. And it's really not cool. So let's, uh, let's bring some awareness to that as well. And see this cannabis shop right here? Yeah, there's no real cannabis for sale anywhere in Prague, much less in the tourist center. So what you're gonna pay for is some kind of counterfeit product, or maybe at best something that has like a very low concentration of uh, CBD. Candy stores, once again, all over Europe you find stores just like this that pretend to be cultural. They pretend to be full of like interesting uh, Czech delicacies, but there's nothing Czech about this whatsoever. Uh, there's nothing even particularly European about this. This is just, it's just 100% uh, a tourist trap and you find these all over Europe. So up ahead of us here where you see that fake roll of dough, this is a Trdelnik stand. And if you've watched any of the Honest Guide videos, you'll know that there's nothing Czech about Trdelnik. It's just purely an excuse to try to sell something sweet and overpriced to tourists who have been walking all day and they're hungry and they're looking for some comfort food. And I have to be honest and say that I've never actually tried it because it just looks gross to me and I'm not super interested in supporting this type of business anyway, so I don't bother. Here we have another Starbucks. And yet another Starbucks, not even a hundred meters away from the last one. <laughs> and I have to confess that I did hang out here a couple times during my first month in Prague because, like I said, I was still a tourist and I was guilty of all the things that tourists are guilty of. Even in the summer of 2021, when COVID has put a damper on everything tourism related, there's still crowds and crowds of people here in Old Town Square, and they come to uh, gawk at the astronomical clock and take selfies and pictures. And once again, I'm not saying I'm innocent of any of this. I was a typical tourist in every single way when I first arrived here. But now that I've been here for a little bit longer, I'm able to have some perspective on how all of this stuff works and point out that it's actually pretty messed up. And it's a big problem that I think the city of Prague and the country of the Czech Republic probably needs to address in some way so that it doesn't get worse and worse and worse over the next uh, five or 10 years. Yeah, really nothing encapsulates the vibe of Prague better than this Thai massage place with uh, neon lighting in the lower level of a building that is decorated like this with a celebration of Czech history. So I don't want to spend the whole video talking about tourism in Prague because uh, that's really a topic for another day, something we can dive into a little bit more deeply. But that's really the only thing on my list of things that annoy me about living in Prague that would almost rise to the level of like, I hate this, right? It kind of goes beyond just annoying when you realize how interesting and unique Czech businesses and Czech culture can really be. And you realize that this tourism industry is just slowly pushing that culture and those businesses out of Prague entirely. 
and that has ripple effects across the entire economy of the country. So everything else on this list is like at most a minor annoyance, something I probably wouldn't even think to mention or talk about unless I was making a video specifically about these little things that annoy me about living in Prague. So we're approaching uh, Dolouha Tshida now, which is the perfect location for the next section of the video, because the next thing that I find annoying about living in Prague is that, in my opinion, good nightlife spots can be relatively hard to find. I'm not saying that they don't exist, because there are so many amazing bars and clubs in Prague if you just know where to find them. But if you look up online, you know, if you're a tourist, or if you're someone who doesn't really know the city that well, and you look online for uh, the places to party in Prague, or where the nightlife scene is in Prague, you're gonna find bars like this one right behind me, which is called the James Dean Bar. And uh, in general, you're gonna find all these bars on this street, or this area called Dloha Trida. So we have, for example, James Dean Bar right here. Further down, we have a place called Steampunk. And then uh, there's a couple over in this little area behind that tree over there. And then there are a couple more further down on Dloha Trida, which is the street that I'm gonna walk down right now. And to be fair, I guess these bars serve their intended function, which is to funnel all of the tourists and their money into one particular location so that they can buy overpriced drinks and cover charges and just generally waste their money and time and energy in an area of the city where the damage that they do is, is relatively contained <laughs> and it doesn't affect the rest of the city that much. But yeah, I mean, long story short, these clubs along the Loja Trida and and elsewhere in this area, they're generally they're generally pretty lame, I have to say. I mean, steampunk, I like the decor. I think there's some cool, uh, like, iron and steel sculptures in there. They've got a cool aesthetic, for sure. And actually, that's, that's generally true of all of these bars in this area, is they all have some kind of theme or some kind of aesthetic that they're committed to. And in general, the themes are, are pretty cool. The concepts for the bars and the aesthetic connected with the bar is it's well conceived, it's well executed, it's well done. But the problem with these bars is the way that they're run and then the clientele that they attract. So just fair warning, if you're in Prague for a short amount of time and you're looking for nightlife, everything you find online is gonna direct you to this street that I'm on right now. And unfortunately, in my opinion, what you're gonna find is disappointing. You're gonna find overpriced clubs, overpriced drinks and generally a clientele that is predominantly tourists or expats or people that are just in the city for a very short period of time and uh, they don't know better they don't know where else they can go to have like a really cool party with good music and affordable drinks and uh, and really interesting people who are actually Czech and who actually live in, uh, in Prague full-time. And if you're male, I would especially advise you away from these particular clubs because on any given night, the ratio of men to women in these clubs is already ridiculously skewed. I mean, sometimes I've seen ratios of like five or six men to one woman in some of these clubs. And obviously it depends on the night, it depends on the time of year, it depends uh, how many tourists are in the city at any given time. But for the most part, overall, unless you've lived in Prague for a long time, and you actually know some Czech people, and you, uh, you have some friends that can direct you towards uh, some less well-known places, you're not gonna know where the best parties are in Prague if you're just a tourist. And even me, I mean, I've, I'm a foreigner and I've lived here for almost two years now, and a lot of the time I still don't know where the best places to go are. If, I, if I'm in the mood to party, if I'm in the mood for some nightlife, uh, I, don't know, I don't always know where to go. And that's the annoying or frustrating thing for me personally is that there's like this false allure of the old town Dloha Trida tourist scene, but that's not really where you should go. Uh, that's not really where you're going to find the best experiences, the, the coolest people, and the best music, the most affordable night. So in general, as a foreigner, I'm a little bit frustrated with both the quality of the nightlife in the standard typical tourist areas of Prague and also just the general sort of inaccessibility of the better nightlife in Prague and how you really have to know some people and you have to almost uh, work your way in and discover it slowly over a longer period of time, which is something I'm still working on. The third thing I find annoying about living in Prague, you can see in front of me right here, we have uh, three different bins for different types of uh, waste. 
So the thing is, in the U.S., just like there's someone who is paid to bag your groceries for you, there's also someone who is paid to separate and sort your recycling when it gets to the recycling center. So all you have to do is separate the items that are recyclable from the items that are not recyclable. And so you have two bins, recycling and trash. The recycling all goes into the recycling bin, and you just give it to the waste company, and they will separate it and figure it out for you, right? But in Prague, and I know this is probably generally a European thing, but you have to actually, like, separate all of the recycling by hand and put it into the proper receptacles. Whenever I take out the trash, I find myself with a giant bag of recycling, and I have to go through item by item, and sometimes there's like several hundred items in there, and I have to sort each one into the proper receptacle. And I just feel like I'm always going through like a tour of my waste from the past two weeks of my life every time I take out the trash. So again, mildly annoying. Uh, I wish I could just throw it all in one bin and, and not have to worry about it, but uh, that's not how it works here, unfortunately. <laughs> And yeah, I could separate everything like on the spot right after I use it and have like a bag for plastic, a bag for glass, a bag for paper, <laughs> like just separate everything out uh, before I even take out the trash. But honestly, my kitchen isn't big enough to have like six separate recycling bags just sit sitting there in the kitchen ready to receive items. So in the end, it works best just to throw everything in one bag, separate it later. But yeah, it's mildly annoying. So I've been looking for an example of the fourth thing on my list, which is the fact that there's constant road construction almost everywhere you walk in Prague. So it's very frustrating sometimes to walk down a sidewalk in Prague and all of a sudden there's a gaping hole uh, 10 feet deep and they've ripped out all the cobblestones and the dirt and they are uh, trying to access the, the pipeline down there or something. So first of all, these construction sites are not particularly well designed or maintained. So if you're not paying attention, it would be pretty easy to, uh, to fall in and you know, break your leg or something. And secondly, it just seems like they last forever. I mean, they dig, up these, they dig up these holes, and then all summer long, there's just this gaping hole in the sidewalk. And actually, my friend has told me that in the fall, when it gets cold, they usually haven't even completed the work. They just fill in the hole and put the cobblestones back on temporarily. And then the next summer, they dig it all up again and they pick up where they left off. And most of the guys that are actually doing this, this road construction work, they're like one step away from indentured servants or slaves, and they don't, they don't care about the work. So they stand around not doing uh, much most of the time. When they leave the site at night, they just throw the tools down, <laughs> like right where they left them, and just walk away. So if you wanted to have a free shovel, for example, it'd be pretty easy to find one on one of the many abandoned construction sites in, uh, in Prague. I understand the need for the construction, and I understand they're probably doing it in the least obtrusive way that they can, but that doesn't make it any less annoying. And since this video is all about complaining, uh, I'm bringing it up here. And the final thing, I'm starting to lose my uh, natural light here. So we're going to wrap up the video pretty soon. The final thing that I find annoying about living in Prague is simply the weather. <laughs> and I think a lot of you guys can probably sympathize with me on this one, but if you try to defend the weather in Prague by saying, oh, the summers are great, yeah, the summers are so nice. Well, I mean, summer is nice everywhere in the world. <laughs> like, just because the summers are nice, that doesn't make it like a nice climate or a nice place to live. And having grown up in Colorado, where we have not only beautiful summers, but also beautiful spring, fall, winter, every season is beautiful in Colorado. I can tell you that in my opinion, the weather in Prague year round, including the summertime, is uh, below average at best. I mean, in the summertime, it's either terribly hot and humid and buggy, or it's raining, so it might as well not even be summertime. And fair warning to anyone thinking of moving here, the wintertime lasts about eight months. I can count on one hand the number of times I saw the sun between October of last year and April of 2021. This, I would say, this is more than just a minor annoyance. This is something that really actually uh, can affect a lot of people's mental health. And it's just something that you have to be aware of if you want to live in this country. Uh, you need to get some nice bright artificial lights or something and take some vitamin D and just figure out ways to cope with the lack of sunlight in the wintertime months. And I mean, it's doable and the rich uh, social scene in Prague and the abundance of uh, pubs and bars and places to go when the weather's not good certainly helps with that. But it's just something you have to be aware of and it's definitely uh, an adjustment for those of us that come from from nice weather places like Colorado. So that about wraps it up. And I have to be honest, I'm a bit nervous because this is the first like 
truly negative video I've done on this channel. But keep in mind that everything I've just said it applies only to Prague, and really specifically most of it, to this touristy central area of Prague, which I think most Czech people would agree has a lot of problems. And there's a lot of things that I think uh, Czech people and citizens of Prague are very annoyed about about this area of the city as well. And the other stuff like the recycling and the road construction, I just bring these up because it's fun to talk about these little relatable details of, of daily life that we're all probably a little bit frustrated by. Except for these girls, uh, I'm gonna guess they're probably not separating their own recycling and they probably travel by limousine everywhere they go, so they're not particularly <laughs> inconvenienced by the road construction. <laughs> Plus they know exactly where the nightlife is because the party follows them wherever they go. So we've come full circle walking back to Old Town Square right now. I'm gonna go enjoy walking right past the souvenir shops and Trdelnik stands and everything else without spending a single crown. And I recommend that you do the same. Signing off here from Prague, Czech Republic, Old Town Square. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button, uh, leave a comment, let me know what annoys you about living in Prague or wherever you happen to live in the Czech Republic or the world for that matter. And uh, subscribe to the channel because that helps me out a lot. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks again, ciao.